Good afternoon, Flusstube. It is May 28th, 2022. It is around 5.30 p.m. local Dutch time. And this is another episode from Anamiek from the Handwerk Boutique. It is episode 22. And um, like the last time, it's been a while. Um, life has just been busy. The shop keeps me very busy. My other job keeps me busy. And there just wasn't enough time to do another Floss Tube video. So you might think that I have loads to share now that I've had all this time to stitch. But the truth is that um, I did stitch that much. I have an update on most of my current whips. That's Pookie who also wants to join in on the fun. I have a fully finished object and an almost finished object that has taken me way longer than I anticipated to finish, but I'm almost there and I'll share it with you later on. First off is um, the project we did for our strawberry workshop. I don't have the chart with me, but this is Bristol Berries 2 from Erica Michael Designs. And this is the one that I stitched and Kobe finished them for us. She did a beautiful job. I'm sorry about Pookie, he's just on his Zoom. And this is the one that my mom stitched. Also beautifully finished by Kobe. These berries are just really, really cute. I've been on a sort of berry um, stitching hunt. Um, Erica Michaels has quite a few of these berries. Uh, she published a couple of new ones in Nashville. There's the sewing bee, which has a berry. There's um, stitch all the things that has a berry. English sampler berries and chocolate or coffee, I think, or coffee or chocolate, which has two berries, if I'm not mistaken. The berries themselves are quite easy to put together and they're really a fun, lot of fun to stitch. So um, you can expect more berries to see from me in the future. Next up is a project that I started last weekend. This is not exactly in um, chronological order. I'm sorry, I just put everything in a box and I got the box downstairs and just wanted to start the video and get it going. I started Coffee Bird by Hard in Hand Needle Art. Last week, I've been stitching quite a few of these birds and this one sh surely couldn't miss in my collection being the coffee lover that I am. So I picked a 40 count Café Ola fabric. I mean, that was just the perfect name for, and the perfect fabric for this project. As you can see, I'm almost there. I need to fill in his eye, some stitching here on the blanket and some, um, I'm gonna say smoke, that's not a correct word, but um, some over here and with the coffee pot and then it's done. As you can see, I changed coffee to the Dutch word coffee, which meant that I had a bit of space left behind the E. So what I did is I stitched those coffee beans over one. Um, they're a little, it's a little hard to see, but there are some, looks like I stitched them completely filled up, but there I left a few, like over here, I left these two stitches uh, unstitched. But it's kind of hard to see that on the 40 count. I could have done it with like half a stitch instead of a full cross, but I like a full cross more than half a stitch. So anyways, I needed something to fill up that space and I think this works, works just perfectly. So tonight I'm gonna finish it and um, do a little bit of the stitching that I've got left. And then this one is also another one for the books. I really love these birds. Um, this coffee bird couldn't be more perfect for me since I'm an absolute coffee lover. Um, there's, I have farmhouse bird ready and spring bird ready. Um, so maybe I'll just start another one pretty soon. I really like these birds. So we'll see what, um, Cecilia has in stock for us. I hope she will be doing more ones. I already told her, I think we should have a crochet bird and, uh, 
maybe a tea or a wine or a margarita bird. I would like that also very much, a margarita bird. Anyway, that was the project that took me way longer. I figured if I'd started it last weekend, uh, it would take me a couple days since I did have some stitching time in the evenings. And somehow it just didn't work out. I would stitch like one color uh, and then got distracted by other stuff and just didn't do a whole lot of stitching. But this evening, mark my words, I'm going to finish it. Next up is, let me see, where do I have the charts? This is what happens when you don't sort everything out. Oh, here is the chart. I've been doing quite a bit of stitching on Louisa Koenig from uh, Stacy Nash Primitives. Um, you can't really see it the way the sampler is. I'm working now on this border, which is the final border, as you can see. It's moving along quite nicely. Here is Louisa. It's a very pretty sampler. Um, it takes a bit more to stitch than I th thought originally. Um, this is on 40 count Café Olé again. It's a new uh, Zweigart color. It's not a hand dyed fabric, but it's a very versatile color that you can use for almost any sampler like project. And I'm stitching it with one strand of pomegranate Gloriana silk. And as you can see, I just made a start with that border down there. I have to admit, these borders are not really what I enjoy stitching. It's, it's kind of a repetitive um, part, and I don't really like doing that. But I decided that I wanted to have that border at the very end of the sampler. I seriously considered leaving it off, but it would look a little bit odd, I think, if I would leave it off. So I just have to hang in there, stitch one strand of red thread a day and just, you know, maybe next time it'll be done. It's a very, very pretty sample with all the different alphabets. And what I like is that she put a dot at the very end of each alphabet. I don't know if I've seen that on very uh, many samplers. I don't know if anybody knows anything about it. It's uh, This is a German sampler, so maybe that's the difference. But like I said, I haven't seen it on many samplers that they put a dot after the Z of the alphabet. So Louisa Koenig is also in my rotation. I'm hoping to get her done in June. Next up, a finish that I forgot that I already finished this. It's another berry. This is Expect Less. This was a club kit from Dying to Stitch a couple of years ago, also designed by Erica Michaels. It is stitched on a 36 count r, r fabric. I forgot which color it is. It's a very pretty neutral color. And it's stitched with one strand of Weeks Dye Works on the 36 count. But as you might be able to see, this little sheep is done with two strands. To make sure that the white would show up better, Erica suggested uh, stitching it with two strands, which I did, and I absolutely love how the sheep uh, turned up, turned out. Sorry. <clears throat> so this is another strawberry that's going to be added to our collection. I don't think the chart has yet been released. Um, Linda from Erica Michael Designs did three different. Um, three different strawberries, Quaker strawberries, and I haven't seen the chart yet, so I've got some time to do the third one. I finished the first one, I think I did it last year. So if I finish the last one this year, uh, then we can put them all together and maybe she'll release the chart either later this year or maybe Nashville next year. And then at least I got the models ready. So that's the other one. Then, in April, I worked quite a bit on Needles Dance. This was a collaboration piece by Hands-On Designs, Ink Circles, and Summerhouse Stitchworks. It was an exclusive uh, class in Nashville 2019, I believe. 
and I'm still working my way uh, through all the different motifs. There's a bit more color changes in this part than I originally thought, and it's slowing me down a little bit. But here is how far I am. I added the two birds, the bunnies, one of the reindeer. I added the, the flower here, the middle motif. But I still need to go back and add um, different colors to that middle motif. So it'll be a little bit, it'll take me a little bit longer to finish this. Um, let's see, there's also this part here that I need to do. So it's, it's gonna take a little bit more time, but once it is done, I'll give it a good iron and put it in a nice, I thought it would be good, looking good in an Ikea frame. Just have to see if it fits, but if it does, it would be perfect for it. So I'll just continue. See, I need to add the tails to the deer here. Um, I think the bunny has a tail too here. I just need to go back in and add, you know, different colors, some stitches here, some, some stitches there, but it's coming along. And I really hope that next month I can finish this as well, because I'm kind of thinking that if I want to start some new projects in July, I better make sure that I finish some of my whips before then. Oh, pokey. There he goes again. He's just, he has his zoomies, I think. I think that's what it is. Um, he's, um, he's been very good. He's, he's uh, really enjoying it when I work from home. I do go back to the office now, usually two days a week. And uh, I don't think he really likes it when I leave him in the morning. Um, but he's, you know, he sleeps most of the day. If, the, if there's one thing I learned from this whole period, Working from home is that, is that Pookie, and I won't say this this goes for all cats, but I think for a lot of cats, he sleeps an awful lot. I would start, you know, like quarter to nine, and he would just, you know, look around in the office, see what I was doing, and then go to the bat bedroom and just sleep on the bed. He would usually get up once in the morning to get some food and some water, get some scratches, go back to bed, sleep. And then I wouldn't see him till like three o'clock in the afternoon. Again, just to eat something. And usually by four, four thirty, he would come and check on me whether I was already, you know, ready to go downstairs, meaning my day was over, my work day. And um, he has a habit of laying uh, in front of the, the door so that he can't miss it. The moment I get up from my chair and, you know, he assumes that we're going downstairs, he'll get up and sit in front of the door. I'll see if I can find a picture of him laying in front of the door and insert it here so you can enjoy it as well. He's really, he's been a lot of fun having him around and I really, really enjoy um just his personality. I know that everybody who gets the newsletter um, sees a photo of Puki every two weeks and um, he just does, you know, silly stuff. It's a cat, so what more can I say? Anyway, the last project that I have that I worked on, like I said, it's gonna be a very short one, I think, short video, because I just didn't get that much stitching on. I'm working on American Homes by Historische Sheet Wooster. This is a chart. I finished this part of the design and I'm now working on the big house here in the middle. And hold on. This is how far I got. Just move a little bit back. There's still a lot to do um, in the middle part. I'll just fold it down a little so I can show you. So, there we go. These are the shutters and I need to add three more here. And let's see. Um, one more here. Then I would like to add the windows, just so that I know um, 
which outline I need to follow. And then there's like the big house to fill in and the roof. And then by that time, I'm almost here. And then I would be at, once this block is finished, I'd be at the halfway point of this uh, project. For me, it's a huge project. I normally don't tackle anything this big, but I'm really enjoying it. I think it's also because there's not uh, a multitude of colors in the project. I think it's like 12 or 14 different colors. So that makes it very manageable, at least for me. And I just need some time to fill in the house. I think once I get going on the house, it's going pretty fast because you don't really have to count anymore once you've done all the outlines. You can just go to town and just fill in that house. And then the roof is, it's also like a solid color. So once I got the bird stitched and so there's something up here, um, I can just fill in this part and then, you know, fill in the background here and then do the vine and the flowers over here and American homes. So I'm kind of hoping that um, once I finished Coffee Bird today, then there's three days left in May. And I'm, I'm sort of of a mind to focus on American homes then and see if I can do part, like half of the, the block. Um, so I think, because this is what I did pretty much in May, uh, sorry, in April, not in May, in April. And my goal is to do like half a block a month. So if I consider all this, that could be my half block for April. And I would have to do a little bit more in May. And since I got only three days left, I better start filling in the house and the windows. But then again, it's, um, it's supposed to be fun and not a job. So we'll see. But um, if I can continue this way, then by the time June is over, I should have this block done. At least that's my goal. We'll see how it goes. So that was American Homes. And then I have, oh, it's over here. And then I have my project that I'm stitching with my Australian friend Bernadette, which is Carolina, Caroline Beringer. This is a great sampler by Summerhouse Stitchworks. Um, at first, both of us weren't too sure about all the color changes because it's really, you stitch one letter and you gotta, you know, start a thread, end the thread. But the colors make it look so, so pretty. On the back, you can see um, the original and Beth from Summerhouse Stitchworks had to fill in and guess some of the colors herself because the original was stitched with wool and over time, some of the letters disappeared. We're making pretty good progress. Um, I think that by the time I'm finished with this, um, this row, I think there's like one row, one, two, three more rows left. And that will be a bit easier because while this row and the next one still have the letters that change color every letter, if you look at the original, uh, once I get started stitching on her name and the place, it's all in one color. So this should go quite a bit faster than all these different letters. But again, it's a lovely um, sampler to stitch. I'm stitching this on 38 count Italian linen in the color Avorio with the called for sampler threads. And I think I substituted um, the orangey one is um, Colonial Copper by Classic Color Works. And the pink, I don't know, let me check. I did do something else for the pink. Oh, here it is. I use Strawberry Fields by Weeks. I can't really see how pink it is. Let me see, maybe this works better. That's better. It's, um, it doesn't call for strawberry pink. It calls for Strawberry Parfait, which is a um, color by Sampler Frets 
but it's only available, I think, in wool. And I believe on the chart, it says that you can change it to another color. I didn't read the chart correctly. So I saw Strawberry Parfait and thought, Strawberry Fields by Weeks. Of course, it makes perfect sense. All the other colors are Gentle Arts and she would use one Weeks to have a pink color. I don't know what I was thinking. But once I started, I wasn't gonna rip out the stitches that I'd already done. And the color looks very pretty with the other ones. So it's in there. There's not a whole lot of pink in this sampler, but just enough to make it interesting. And like I said, all these different letters, all these colors, it's very, very much, uh, it's very cheerful to stitch. So I'm hoping we're gonna stitch tomorrow again, and I'm hoping that I can finish this row, maybe get a start on the first letter of the next row. That's it. Um, no more stitching got done. Um, like I said, the shop keeps me busy. My work keeps me busy. Um, I've been doing a bit more of cooking, baking, and it all takes time and it takes time away from my stitching. But this, you know, now that my flush tube is, um, recorded, I can see how I can upload it. That's always a Kind of a guess how long it'll take. Um, I know that the last time I had to wait uh, overnight to get the video uploaded and then in the morning it was uploaded. So we'll see how long it takes. Um, I'm planning to watch the uh, Champions League finals um, this evening between Liverpool and Real Madrid. I have been very fond of uh, Liverpool clubs, so I'm rooting for them and hoping that they'll win this time. Um, tomorrow is um, kind of like a day off, basically. Uh, I'm going to stitch with Bernadette. I might stitch on some of the other projects. Yes. Are you going to say goodbye? No. What are you doing? He's just running around. And um, just cleaning up some stuff in the house, declutter some stuff, and probably do a load of laundry and get ready for the week. This might be more than you needed to know about my Sunday. Anyway, I hope that next time I have more stitching progress. Um, it, um, like I said, it just didn't work out the last couple of weeks. And I'm also hoping that from now on I can do a monthly video. I think that's very doable. I know some people do every week, every two weeks. That's just not gonna work for me. I wouldn't have enough progress to show you. And like I said, I think I'll just aim for once every month. And then I sort of have a schedule for myself as well. And then, you know, whatever I got stitched during those weeks, that's what I got stitched. I wish you a very happy weekend. I hope you can enjoy some downtime, spend some time with family and loved ones, um, stitch a bit. You can't see, Pookie just walked around uh, uh, the table. And um, take care of yourself and of others. And I'll see you next time. Bye.